Now, uh, <clears throat> on to, uh, you know, Suzlon. Uh, that's the company on our radar. Now, the company has successfully uh, completed the QIP issuance. It's raised 2,000 crore rupees via a QIP offering. Uh, to discuss this and more on the fundraise, we have Himanshu Modi, uh, CFO at the company, joining in. Mr. Modi, good to have you with us here. Good morning. You know, I remember we spoke last uh, on the 31st of May this year, two months back. Uh, Suzlon stock was just over 10 rupees. Uh, you know, 20 rupees uh, uh, plus now. So it's basically double from the last time that we spoke. And now you have done this uh, QIP uh, offering. Could you talk to us a little bit about the usage of uh, what the uh, funds will be for? Uh, we understand a portion will be used to retire debt. Uh, what is the current debt? What is the extent of reduction uh, repayment that you will do? Uh, and uh, just some guidance as well. What will be the rate at which, uh, you know, you, you, uh, the, the annual reduction in interest costs? So, uh, firstly, thank you for having me again. Um, so, uh, as you rightly said, we've completed the QIP of 2,000 crores. Uh, we launched the issue with a 1,500 plus 500 upsize option. Um, looking at the uh, encouraging investor interest uh, and the kind of names that we got, uh, we decided to go for the entire 2,000 crores. Now, of the 2,000 crores, about uh, 1,500 crores would go towards uh, uh, debt repayment. And... Uh, the balance would be for working capital and capex purposes. Uh, this would mean that uh, the Suzlon balance sheet uh, would be completely uh, debt free. In fact, uh, net debt free. And uh, you know, after a sort of hiatus of fifteen years, uh, so we would in fact be cash surplus uh, without any debt on the balance sheet. Oh, that's great to hear. So, fifteen hundred crores will be used for debt repayment, and then the company will be net debt free, having a cash surplus. So that's on the balance sheet. Wanted to understand a little bit about the order pipeline as well. What's the latest there? There was a large potential 10 gigawatt order from the wind energy segment that was expected in FY24. Um, what can you realistically achieve uh, in this year itself? And what could the growth look like over the next couple of years? So, uh, you know, our confirmed order currently is about 1.6 gigawatts, uh, which we have uh, under our kitty. Uh, the 10 gigawatt that you were, of course, saying, uh, you know, from a regulatory perspective, uh, there's a bidding calendar that's been issued uh, by the authorities, uh, which uh, aims at doing about 50 gigawatts of renewable energy through the year, of which uh, 10 gigawatts in a year is dedicated wind, uh, plus the other 40 gigawatts would be uh, solar and a portion of wind as well. Uh, now, as for the bidding calendar, the first uh, 2.5 gigawatts of uh, uh, bids or RFPs have been issued, and I think uh, uh, the bids will be underway soon. So, as and when the uh, regulatory regime, uh, you know, conducts the bidding cycle, uh, of course, as uh, OEMs, one of the leading OEMs, uh, would be talking to the prospective uh, utility companies uh, that secure those bids. All right. Hi, Mr. Modi. Good morning. Uh, you know, it's good to hear that you're going to be debt free. And obviously, the total addressable market for you as well is fairly large. We'll talk about that a little bit more detail uh, in a while. But for this year, what kind of a revenue number you're looking at and what kind of margins? And I ask you this because your enterprise value now, your market cap is 25,000 crores odd. So the EBITDA number will be in focus to get a rough multiple on EV upon EBITDA. What kind of revenue growth in comparison to last year? What is the margin band we're looking at? So uh, I don't want to be giving any forecasts uh, on, on this platform because... Uh, you know, last year we did about 840 crores of uh, consolidated EBITDA in FY23. And, uh, you know, Q1 results have also been uh, on track. Uh, so we will be on track for, you know, performance uh, towards delivering the uh, 1.6 gigawatts order book, as I said, which we have under our belt. Uh, a part of that is for FY24 uh, and also some part of that is for FY25 already, which we've secured. So I don't want to give any p and guidance on this, but... Uh, uh, we are on track towards delivering on our business plan. But there will be a revenue growth for this year. First quarter has been flattish. There will be a revenue growth. And since some input costs have pulled off as well from these mid-teens, that's 15% odd, can the margin band move a little bit higher? So, uh, you know, again, uh, that will be our endeavor. But, you know, again, I don't want to give guidance on increasing the margin band, uh, you know, by improving working capital efficiency of the company, which is one of our key targets, uh, uh, certainly, as a byproduct, uh, we would be looking at how we can optimize margins. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, typically, if you see uh, H1 of the financial year uh, is you know about 30 to 40 percent of the overall uh, uh, 
financially or because of the seasonality. Uh, so the businesses are more skewed towards uh, H2 in terms of uh, uh, revenue recognition and deliveries of the machines. Mm. Mr. Modi, uh, not to tie you down to any particular number, but last time, uh, to, uh, when last we spoke, you said, uh, you know, you could, uh, FI24 revenues could be about 8,000 crores. Uh, well, that was, if I remember, that was a conjecture that you guys let me do. So, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, we would be uh, on track, as I said, to deliver our uh, order book, uh, which is available with us. And um, last year, I think consolidated revenue, we did close to about 6,000 crores. Uh, yes. And we did about 664 megawatts in deliveries uh, in FY23. Uh, now, depending on how much of the 1.6 gigawatt we're able to deliver in FY24 would uh, determine how much over the 6,000 crores in revenue we're able to do. Mm. Just to uh, sort of go uh, that, <clears throat> you know, you said uh, you're, you're debt-free after a long time, right? I mean, Suzlon of yesteryears, uh, you know, we, we remember that. But then at that point, there was also the problem of debt. Now you're debt-free after a long time. What kind of and you said there's a there's a calendar which has been issued ten gigawatt of wind power auction every year right so and uh, so the market is there opportunity is there does the company have the capability or are you building capability or it's all there to kind of uh, you know optimally use it to uh, to 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 build out things in a very uh, sustainable kind of way over the next four five years if you can give us some sense. No, so sure, from a company perspective, uh, the capability to deliver uh, a substantial market share of whatever India does in terms of uh, wind additions has always been there. Um, you know, I'd sort of like to pick up an example of 2017, uh, which was the last peak uh, that we saw in terms of wind implementation. Uh, was close to about 5.5 gigawatts uh, is what the country did in 2017 financial year. And in that very year, uh, as a company, we did about 1.8 gigawatts. Um, so it was one third of the market share uh, in 2017, uh, which was six years ago. So there is no reason for me to believe that if you know we could do that six years back, uh, you know why wouldn't we be able to do it today uh, with a much more stronger and leaner balance sheet? Mm. Uh, I just have one more question on this ONM AMC, the operation and maintenance uh, vertical, right? So, uh, in that segment, what kind of growth are you looking at and any guidance? I mean, I know you don't want to give us any guidance, but just the trajectory on what uh, this segment could do for you? So, this segment, in fact, uh, uh, you know, the business cycle is that once we deliver the machines, there's a, a three-year warranty that we uh, built into the pricing. Uh, so in FY24, FY25, uh, uh, you know, there would be inflationary linked uh, secular growth on the ONM business because the supplies that were done three years ago, uh, due to the financial constraints of the company and also COVID, uh, the supplies were limited. Uh, so the real uptick uh, in the business for ONM uh, would be visible uh, from FY26 onwards, which would be a discontinued growth. But 24, 25 financial year on the ONM side would be. Uh, more sort of secular, inflationary linked growth. All right. Uh, uh, Himachi, just coming to, uh, coming back to you, we got a new listing uh, right here on the screens. SBFC, uh, which is uh, small business finance, uh, that has made, it, made a debut uh, in uh, the marketplace. Uh, you know, it's run by very well-regarded uh, promote, uh, promoters, I mean, uh, people who launched the business. And it's not an old business. I mean, you know, just launched, I think, in 2017 or so. Uh, by veteran HDFC uh, bank bankers. Uh, so, you know, the market uh, has uh, taken a bet on the promoters and, of course, I mean, what they're trying to do out there. So it's a 50% premium to the issue price, basically, right at the word go. Uh, the stocks come to the market at about 85, 86. There was some hand-wringing about the fact that even in the issue price, the valuations were a little steep. Uh, but, well, things have gotten a little steeper with uh, the listing. So, yeah, I mean... You know, the market pretty receptive of uh, what is perceived to be good quality promoters and uh, good quality businesses. Absolutely. Well. And, you know, even if you look at their core financials, right, the AUM growth has been really strong. I mean, yeah. in the past couple of years, it's a 50% AUM growth that the SBFC Finance has seen. And as you said, the uh, management is not only experienced, but they have a very strong retail lending uh, background as well. So, uh, you know, that, of course, will help uh, at a time like this. So, SBFC Finance having a very strong listing there. But um, Himanshu, before we let you go, uh, you know, just one final question from my end. We were talking about how the company is going to be debt-free now with the proceeds of the uh, of the QIP. But any fresh capex that you'd want to put on board, would you have to tap the market anytime soon for 
you know, expanding your capacity? No, so we have, uh, you know, enough capacities in store to be able to deliver the market requirements. Uh, and yes, there is certain capex that we need to be uh, incurring in FY24. Uh, and part of the QIP proceeds, uh, the balance 500, as I said, uh, would be towards working capital and the capex requirements uh, that we have uh, for this financial year. Uh, so we are well geared up uh, from a market opportunity uh, to completely meet the demand and take a fair share uh, of uh, what we deserve. Okay, Manshu, thanks so much for stopping by. Well, the big headline, I think, is that you're debt-free, which is good news for your shareholders. I think next time around, we'll try to quiz you a little bit more on the operational guidance for this year, because now, as I said, the market cap is already 25,000 crores odd. All eyes will be on the EBITDA. For the